The Nikon Z5 has won the hearts of many a photographer because it's packed full with features, has a high megapixel count, and doesn't scorch a hole in your pocket. So I thought it was time for a video that gave you an external body tour. For those of you who haven't picked up one yet, but you're considering buying one. The most important button, the shutter button, is right here, bracketed by the on and off switch. Also pretty important. To its right is the video record button, which you can use to record video, <laughs> surprise, surprise, or you can reprogram to do pretty much anything else, including AE lock, preview, zooming, changing specific shooting settings, auto bracketing, multiple exposures, <laughs> explosions and exposures, HDR, exposure delay, and so on. Just below it is the aperture dial, which you can reverse if you'd like them to work counterclockwise instead of, well, clockwise. You can spy from this angle the exposure compensation button and nestled between the video record and the exposure compensation is the ISO button, which can be switched to auto by pressing it and moving the aperture dial forward. Otherwise, press it and change the ISO with the shutter speed dial. This too can be reversed in direction and work counterclockwise. The back of the camera is familiar Nikon territory. The menu button allows you to access the, wait for it, menu. Below that, you can access frames per second and timer delay. Your classic zoom in and out buttons are to the left and above these four buttons is your OK button and directive selection moving panel. I called it that, I'm not sure what it's called. The OK button can be programmed to zoom in on shooting mode and in playback mode. You can go to thumbnails, view histograms or choose a folder for your photo. Above this is the info button, which gives you access to your quick menu. And above this is the joystick, which allows you to choose where your focus point selection moves to. You can also program the joystick to achieve multitude of jobs from metering choice, flash enable and disable, AF lock, bracketing bursts, and displaying a framing grid. And if you're like, what on earth do these mean? Well, you can Google them or ask in the comments and I'll be nice and I'll tell you. The AF on button enables you to customize what autofocus options you'd like to use it for. The disp means display and enables you to change what options are displayed either when shooting or reviewing an image. You can select the amount of information made available through the menu option, which is also the switch to choose between video and stills. Sneaking a peek on the side of the electronic viewfinder, which is EVF if you want to feel special, is this display switch enabling you to move between the screen or EVF priority or automatic. Automatic jumps between the two depending on where your face is. The little rubbish bin button is what you press after you take a rubbish photo to get rid of it. And the box triangle allows you to see what photo you just took. On the side, you can plug in a USB-C, HDMI, and cable release, as well as headphones and an external mic. This awkward button is the one you press to detach your lens when hopefully you're holding on to them. There are two other function buttons which sit within the reach of your right hand fingers. Both can be used to select a function from a long list, including display, image, playback, change white balance, set picture control, select metering, change focus mode and area mode, rate an image, and generally offers the same options as the record button. That rarely used dial on the right side of the EVF allows you to change the EVF to suit your eye needs. The mode dial sits next to that smaller EVF dial, offering automatic, programmed, aperture and shutter priority, manual mode and three customizable setting options. Next to this is the built-in microphone and speaker, recognizable as a circle of seven tiny little holes. The screen is fully enhanced, half articulating touch screen and built into the handle are the card slots, which still move the battery compartment, which sits alongside a quarter 20 female mounting screw, all flanked by two camera strap anchors and topped off with a hot shoe that sits on the EVF to mount a flash sensor or transmitter to, and we are there. If you love this camera, you can buy it. If you don't, don't buy it. Thanks so much for watching. All my other videos are quite different to this, so if you want to check them out, please do. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this. Thumbs up's always helpful, and I'll catch you later.